Hi everyone, it's Stephen Downs here from Castleman, Ontario, Canada. And uh, somebody's mic is open, if you could uh, please mute your mic. Um, this presentation is for a personal learning platform. And I want to uh, advise ahead of time that you know, this isn't something I expect you to buy or anything like that. It's just uh, something I've been working on to try to explore a concept. So you might be asking, what is that concept? That concept is the idea of aggregate, remix, repurpose, and feed forward. This to me is probably the best explanation of how I think we should be using open educational resources in learning. The idea here is that Open educational resources are something that we create and work with and share and communicate with rather than pre-structured academic contents. So it's a different kind of picture of learning. Here is an example of my learning process. And as you can see on the right hand side of the slide, aggregate, remix, repurpose, feed forward. But in more detail, I get content, learning content from a wide range of sources, blogs, articles, papers, reports, etc. I keep a list of feeds, I keep a list of things that I want to read, and I bring these together, I mix them up, and then using that, I rework them, I repurpose them, I find patterns in them, I actually learn from them. And then I take that learning, whatever it is, I apply it to courses or projects or whatever, but I also feed forward the result of my learning in different ways. That way I get feedback and criticism and the cycle starts again. I have learned over many years that this is a, an incredibly effective way, at least for me, to learn. So the first step is aggregation. Aggregation, is a way of bringing content in. You're seeing here a, a screen from my Grasshopper application. It's on the left-hand side are the list of feeds that I subscribe to. On the right-hand side is a screen for working with that feed. When I use the feed, I bring in a specific article from the feed. And here we're looking at a specific article. I can get articles from different feeds, sort them by topic, get uh, them by status, whether they're fresh or stale, uh, different kinds of media. And this is really important to emphasize. I'm not just thinking of everybody getting the same kind of media from different places. I'm talking about all kinds of media, images, videos, simulations, live events, H5 interactions, whatever. It should be a whole bunch of different things because I'm going to bring them in together, smoosh them together. So this is a look at the different kinds of resources that are out there for different purposes. You know, we can go very deep into the ecosystem required to make the system work. But all of this should be behind the scenes. And I try to keep it behind the scenes when I'm working with my content on a regular basis. Here's an interpretation uh, from a group of our authors, including Terry Anderson, on the remix process that happens in the course of learning this way. This is an example of what people did in the Change 11 MOOC. You see all the different sources, right? Edgy blogs, WordPress, HuffPost, Tumblr, Facebook groups, DJ groups, Twitters, etc. So we're looking at many different types of sources, many different types of content. And the idea here is that I have a subscription list, a list of contacts, or places I get content from, and then I look at that content as it comes in on a regular basis, and I work with it. Working with it means repurposing. For me, repurposing content means writing something up, but it could mean anything, right? It could mean any kind of blend of different kinds of media together to produce something to share. For example, uh, what I use in Grasshopper is a specific system of page commands and page editors in order to mix the different contents and display it in different ways. 
Here, for example, is a presentation page from my website. You can see the link at the bottom there. On the left-hand side is the slides. On the right-hand side is the video. Sometimes I include pictures. I also use these days Google Transcript to produce an automated transcript for me. Here's another example. It's my daily newsletter. Here I'm taking items from specific individuals and writing a commentary on each item, putting links into that, and then sending it out by email. Here's what the network of people using this kind of system looks like. It's not like Twitter where you publish something and you blast it out to everybody. No, the idea here is that we share to those who are subscribing to us. We collect from those uh, we are subscribing to. That's the presentation, um, and uh, I'd be happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, the floor is open for questions. Uh, Stephen, I got to ask you, how long have you been running OL Daily? Because my recollection is I subscribed to that back in like 1998. Is that, did, have you been doing it that long? The first web-based versions of OL Daily uh, started in 1998. That's when the RSS was available. And I started it as an email newsletter in 2001. Yeah, it's, uh, long before I knew about open education, I was following Stephen. There are about 34,000 individual items in OL Daily. Wow. Uh, the floor is open. Who has a question for Stephen? Oh, I see Joan has one in the chat. Yeah, Joan is asking how many people are using Grasshopper. Can anyone sign up? Uh, again, I haven't really distributed Grasshopper, so the answer to that question is like a handful at best. What I've been working on recently uh, in this past year is a way to make it accessible to everybody using Docker. So, because it's a complicated application to run. Uh, it runs on Perl. It requires a web server and a database. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it in an individual container that anyone can download and run on their own computer. Um, that container is available. It's on GitHub. And there's a link in this presentation to the Grasshopper website, I think. Uh, but if, if not, uh, it's GRSS Hopper. Um, dot downs dot ca and I'll type that into the chat for you. All right. Other questions for Stephen? There you go. And uh, thank you, Indira. She's put the uh, the GitHub link into uh, Grasshopper. And, and do feel free to contribute to it. I mean, I'm writing it in Perl, and nobody works in Perl, so I don't have too many contributions. And any ideas as well. I mean, I'm all yours. I've been working on it for a long time, and I don't expect it to ever be done or commercially viable. But again, it's to instantiate this idea, right? The, this, this approach to learning online, which I think is different from uh, the traditional model of create a resource, share the resource, right? Uh, you know, create a you know a, a learning object, if you will. I'm 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 talking about a much looser definition of open online contents. 